And here they come out onto the field of play. Gontier leading them out. Time for semi-final number one here in Antalya on compound Saturday. And then taking to the shooting line, uh, Federico Pangioni of Italy on the left, a 33-year-old is world number 42, goes up against Adrian Gontier of France, who is the world number 106 at 28 years old. On target number two, representing France, Adrien Gontier. The line judge for this matchup is Bettina Kratzmüller. Well, perhaps not the lineup we were expecting for this semi final, Nikki. No, it wasn't really, um, but it's going to be an exciting match. Um, I think for me, Pagnoni probably got the advantage here, you know, more experience, the higher world ranking, um, but, you know, anything is possible. Yeah, it should be a very intriguing one, uh, uh, but for, for perhaps the reasons we weren't expecting. And if you look at the. The, the route here, Pagnoni perhaps having the slightly tougher one, beating Chris Schaff in round number two, and then Bulyev in round number three. So he had a slightly harder run. But it will be Adrian Gontier of France who will shoot first to get this semi final underway. <laughs> what a start! Wow, quite an erratic back arm, wasn't it? Um, nice, good t back tension, but speedy on the on the release. Wow, well, wow, well, wow! Well. What a start from Adrian Gontier. Just drifting out. The first two are grouped really well for uh, Pagnoni. Uh, he's pulled that one wide. Uh, 28 plays 30. But Nicky, what about the confidence? It's not just the score. It's the fact that those shots were so well grouped. Yeah, lovely group. Lovely confidence, like you say. First arrows out here. Um, a relatively inex inexperienced archer, really. And, um, yeah, not face at all, was he? It's that thing about... <laughs> I don't talk about it all the time. Archery is about when the opportunity comes, taking advantage of it. If, if from a very simple point of view, that's how I look at it. And I think this opportunity is perhaps slightly more wide than the ones we talk about, about specific shots in, in within ends uh, in compound archery. This is a more about the fact that he's found or fought his way into this opportunity for a medal. And doesn't seem to have phased him at all. No, just stick to your game plan. You know, it's nothing different. We're still at 50 metres, shooting on an 80 centimetre face, you versus the target. So if you can stick to your game plan, you know, why not go out there and shoot tens? There you go. You're, you're clearly, you listen to what I said about uh, the fact that I'm a very simple man and kept that very basic for me. Uh, even I could understand that description. But, it, you know, but joking aside, it is about shooting those tents. And, uh, and that's what his pair are expected to do. Pagnoni trailing by two after end number one. We'll get end number two underway. Pagnoni's turn to hit the middle of the target on a consistent basis. Bit of a longer hold there. Now is that going to go to a measure? It is. I'm going to call it in. It looked very, very close to me, but we'll have to wait for the judge. Oh, there you go. A perfect from uh, Pagnoni. Puts him on a 58. Clearly the stadium announcer is not a fan of Pagnoni. <laughs> Normally he calls out 10, 10, 10. Three nines provisionally for uh, Adrian Gontier. Uh, Nikki, you felt that second one was a was a clear ten? 
quite, I, I wouldn't say clear, but <laughs> <laughs> it looked really, really close to me, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see that marked up. It's interesting that you say that, because I thought, oh, that's going to be a difficult one, because it looks like it's very close to another hole. Yeah, it can make it really tricky, so the judge will have to get their magnifying glass out and you know get an idea of where the line would have been to make that decision. Are there circumstances where the judges aren't 100% sure, and if that is, if they, they aren't 100% sure, what what are they obliged to call? They have to make a decision, obviously, um, but if they can't see that it's out, the arrow must be in. The default is to call for the higher call. Yeah. Right, okay, that's good to know. Uh, let's see if uh, Adrian Gontier benefits from that. Well, he's uh, got a 58, so he has had that arrow marked up I, I, in my book. He's got a 9-10-9. Just double check that. Because it looks like. Well, it's going to be Gontier to shoot first. Which he did in the first. Nice. Oh, let's see, all square. Put into the nine again and making an adjustment this time. Damn! see quite a lot of movement going on with this bow a bit of body sway as well wide nine eight or nine well that's called for a measure by the stadium announcer it's marked as a nine 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 oh, 27 this time at four Gontier backwards at the moment a beautiful finish from Pagnoni puts him two points into the lead uh, what's been fascinating for me is uh, Pagnoni's arrows all seem to be in this sort of horizontal bracket that across that, uh, that 9 and 10 mm -hmm. yes his arrows are only kind of left and right uh, which could be down to a few things it could be balance maybe front back of the like we talked about you know, that you pull in too hard, pushing not enough, that can give you a bit of sway, that can make it go left or right. Could be just down to a little left and right breeze. But everything on the same height is a step in the right direction, yeah. 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 <laughs> You're getting the, uh, the vertical uh, aiming right. It seems to me that Adrian Gontier, having shot that perfect 30, looking solid as a rock, uh, is just starting to take some steps backwards. Anything in particular you're spotting? Not particularly. I think, you know, in, in, inexperienced archers come out, shot 30 first end, and maybe the pressure's now getting to him. I think when he first come out, you, you just get on with it. And then over time, I would start to feel more nervous through the end. So it's possible that you start to feel the nerves. Suddenly you're shocked, you know, come out here and shot 30. Maybe got excited with that. So, you know, see if he settles down again, because we know he can shoot those 30s. Yeah, pressure of expectation, even if you put it on yourself, can weigh very heavy. But uh, Gontier trailing by two now will get end number four underway. Needs to repair some of the damage straight away. Ten. Ten. Italian was there, ready to go, wasn't he? Um, as soon as his opponent had finished, a bit of wind in the stadium, we can see. Well, 29, so progress being made from Gontier. But Pagnoni on for a perfect here, the second of the match for him. 
might see the movement though. Nine. He's drifted it in to the nine, but still right, holds a two-point lead. That was a great so shot, actually, Mickey, wasn't it? Where you could see the, the, the hand, hand holding the bow actually moving up and down. I mean, the wind must be. It doesn't look that strong. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're human beings. We're not robots, so we shouldn't expect them to be holding dead still. And I think a lot of people think that that you know, they go down the club and be able to hold this bow dead still. It's not possible. We've got to move, um, and it's got to be dynamic. So uh, we talked about push and pull of compound, but you've got to be able to move with the wind too. Um, don't feel if, you, if you're trying to be too still and static, you create tension. We don't want tension. We want relaxation as well. Um, so yeah, you know they, they will move, but we did see more of a movement, didn't we, on that last one, which led to that nine. No, look, improvement from Adrian Gontier going from a. Uh, a 28 down to a 27 in the second and third going back up to a 29 so his progress is going good but we're into last three arrows for each archer here can he get back in this two points is a big margin three arrows in compound but anything is possible yeah it certainly is two points is not uh, unassailable deficit and uh, remember this is for a place in the gold medal match the loser will have a second bite of the cherry because they'll go into the bronze medal playoff but Gontier two behind Shooting first must put some pressure down with some big scores. Yeah. That's a good start. So now it's about mental fortitude for Pagnoni. Yeah. He just looked dead solid, didn't he? And that powerful back arm as the shot broke. Beautiful shot. Well, he needed that to happen, as well as shooting well. Chance for Gontier to snatch this at the 11th hour. A perfect 30 from him to finish off. A 144 means Pagnoni needs a 10 to force the shoot off. Oh, and he's got it. After shooting an eight, he's recovered to get that 144. Nothing between this pair after our five regulation ends. And Pagnoni telling himself off there for that eight. I, did, was it breaking concentration, maybe? Yeah, I just don't know what happened to him there. But um, Gontier just looked so powerful, didn't he? The shots were beautifully set up, beautifully executed. What a way to come back with a 30 in the last end. Amazing stuff from Gontier. Did what he needed to do by, because he was shooting first, putting that pressure on, and it was enough to break Pagnoni's. I think concentration is what got him in the end on that second arrow. Great for him to recover to shoot the 10, which means we are, well, we get treated to another shoot off. Remember, single arrow this season, closest to the center at the target and uh, look this is by no means over they're cleaning off the target faces they'll put brand new faces on there in case we need to go for a measure it will be adrian gontier the world number 106 who will shoot first going up against pagnoni the world number 42. i, I definitely can't see a favourite here at I, all. I think he's got an advantage, Gontier. He's going to be up first. He's just come off the back of a really lovely end. Really great shots. Uh, you know, let's see what he can put down. It's time to find out. You can hear the heartbeat that signals the shoot off. One arrow closest to the centre will shoot for gold. Nine. Not a bad shot, but room for Pagnoni here, anything in the ten ring. Oh, lovely, a solid shot as well. Confident from him in the shoot off there. The Italian had a minor error in the fifth end, dropping into the eight for the very first time in the match. It opened the door for a resurgent French Adrian Grantier shot, a perfect 30 from him, forcing the shoot off, but in the shoot off, the Italian was, as they say, Forza. He was absolutely bang on, looked confident, and Federico Pagnoni of Italy will go on to shoot for gold here in Lausanne. Well, he just he did look like uh, the, the, mo the moments where he showed great confidence in the match came all together in one go in that final hour. He just looked strong, confident, I'm going to win this. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a great match, wasn't it? Tossing and turning between the two of them, and um, it's just so hard to call. But that last arrow from Gontier, I mean, it looked great. It was really well set up, really well executed, but yeah, nine's just, just not good enough, sadly. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that far out either, but look at that. It's the face of uh, a, a winner, really, quite frankly, and, that, and that's what he's done. He's gone on uh, to make it into the gold medal match. Gontier will compete for the bronze a little bit later on. You'll understand once you see the faces of the archers that are about to perform on the field of play. As we welcome our judge and coaches well, to the field, it's time of play, to turn ready. our attention to semi final number two and the other half of our final four. And what a lineup it is again. It's just uh, coming up to half past three 